it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. The truth doesn't care about our wants or needs. It doesn't care about our governments or ideologies or religions. To lie in wait for all time. This, at last, is the gift of Chernobyl. Do not let the ghosts of Chernobyl touch you. I always wondered why ghost hunters never went to Chernobyl. I've seen movies where they have monsters or mutated animals there, but I've never seen anything on ghosts. You think with the nuclear meltdown and the amount of deaths that happened there, they'd have some activity going on. Well, it piqued my interest so much that I planned a trip there. Well, I've been on small ghost hunts all over the country before, so I was no stranger to this stuff. And I've been to the supposed most haunted places, but never really found anything interesting. Yeah, I've seen some weird stuff on my journeys, but never anything like what I came across in Chernobyl. The ghosts are completely different there. I'm not sure if it's the radiation before their death or after their death that completely mutated them. For the trip, I had to make sure I went alone. That was my thing. I noticed you get more paranormal activity when you go alone. Or maybe they feel like they have more power over one person than a group of people. But by choosing to go alone, it made the trip extremely difficult and much more dangerous. After months of planning and studying the land, I was finally there. I drove as far as I could and walked a few hours more to get there. I arrived early on in the day hoping to hit all the landmarks, the ferris wheel, the azure swimming pool and the iconic rows of abandoned apartment buildings reclaimed by nature. When I finally arrived, I immediately started setting up my gear. I set up my camera and started live streaming the event online. I had a few diehard fans that watched me live, but I mostly did the live stream as a type of insurance. If anything bad happened, I was hoping someone watching would call for help or alert the police. The first few hours were uneventful. I didn't hear or see anything. My supposed voice box was not picking up anything. I was honestly about to start packing up my gear when I noticed a comment on my live stream. Who's that following you? Is that a cameraman? Following me? Nobody's following me, I assured them. I came here alone. It's just me. I panned around and retraced my steps, but nothing was there. I thought for sure someone was trolling me, but more comments kept popping up from different people. Who's that behind you? They asked. Well, this made chills run down my spine, but I had to keep my composure. I mean, this could be a local, or worse, someone looking to rob me. I did have a few thousand dollars worth of gear on me. Being all alone in an abandoned city made me a very vulnerable target. If anything went wrong, I was screwed. But I had to find out who was following me. Okay, then. Let's see how close we can get to it. I remembered entering a room with a mirror immediately adjacent to the door. Maybe I could catch a glimpse of whoever was following me using that. I circled around and made my way towards that door. Well, when I'd left, the door was open, but... Upon my return, it was closed and locked shut. Oh, fuck. This is going to take some time, I told my viewers. I left my camera facing the door and tried to force it open, but it felt like this door was nailed shut, even though I'd just been through here. I decided to give it all my strength in three pushes and then give up. I mean, I should probably be heading back soon anyway. One, two, three. Bang. It flew open. I landed a few feet in front of the mirror, laughing, brushing the dust off myself when I remembered why I'm here in the first place. The follower. I looked up into the mirror and saw a pitch-black mass floating behind me. I should have run, but I was completely frozen in fear. This didn't seem like a ghost, but more like a black hole had appeared behind me. Suddenly the mass reached out towards me, before I could flinch or even close my eyes in fear, everything went black. I don't know how long I was passed out for, but when I woke up, I was in a completely different place. Everything felt different. The air was warm, with a slight noticeable draught blowing in one direction. I stood up and noticed that the room was now covered in an inch of dust. 
The room also looked like someone had moved everything around, searching for something. I went to grab my camera and saw that it was gone. I reached for my backpack and that too was gone. Oh, great. Someone freaking robbed me. I let out in anger. I was trying to piece together what had happened, but I could only recall black mass, not a person. Sadly, my head was throbbing with a headache. I couldn't recall anything clearly at that moment. I started to make my way out of the building when, in horror, I noticed the sky was now dark red and orange. The first thing that came to my mind was that the reactor had somehow exploded again. I could faintly hear a siren going off in the distance, but it sounded odd. It was broken and not repeating properly like it had been running for years. I started making my way towards the exit and my rental car, which I could not be any further from. I, mean, I had to make my way through the entire town and pass God knows what with all this hell going on. If this was another nuclear meltdown, I was fucked. I was right in the exclusion zone with no protective gear, nothing to defend myself with, and I still had a long way to go. As I got closer to the town centre, I started hearing the strangest animal noises I'd ever heard. I thought for sure the radiation was slowly torturing whatever animals were left here to death. I kept walking, and I noticed the whole town looked different now. I don't know what happened when I was passed out, but everything was different. It was like people were still here ravaging through everything. It was so different that I decided I should just retrace my steps so I wouldn't get lost in all this new junk. But I couldn't shake the feeling that something was following me. Maybe that same follower from before. I entered into a hospital I'd walked through earlier. In here, those ungodly noises were not as loud and terrifying. I swore that something or someone was out there in agony... I didn't want to find out who or what it was. At this point I was feeling woozy, my head was throbbing, and I decided I needed a break. I entered into a room with windows so I could keep an eye on whatever the hell was going on out there. I was sitting, staring out the window, when I noticed even the trees looked different the closer I got towards the reactors. They were now bare and deformed. They looked like large bat wings curled in, but all the trees and branches were being blown away from the reactor towers almost like a continuous wind was pushing them away. God, I wonder how long I was out for. Could I have been passed out a whole day and all this happened? I tried to ease my mind. This felt like a living hell. Could I be dead? As all these horrible thoughts were racing through my mind, a mother holding a small child on her shoulder staggered past the window. Hey, hello, I shouted, but to no response. She just kept on limping by in what looked like a great amount of pain. I ran outside in a desperate attempt to get her attention. Hey, please, stop. I can help. I kept running towards her and yelling and waving my arms. When I finally got close, she slowly stopped, but just stared straight forward. Well, this stopped me dead in my tracks. As I was closer, I could make out the details of her. She was horribly burned. Her ears were nothing but holes and her face was a blank canvas of melted skin. The constant wind blew away the blanket covering her baby to reveal a large mass of flesh and small body parts half mutated into her body. Well, her child was dead. As I was now close enough for her to hear me, I could also now hear her. A whimpering cry was coming from inside her skin-covered mouth. I was petrified in fear. A mutated monster stood in front of me, and I didn't know what to do. In what felt like an eternity, she slowly turned her head towards me. She started motioning her head upwards in a sniffing action like she could smell me. Well, that was enough for me to turn back towards the hospital and run as fast as I could without looking back. I could hear her muffled crying getting louder and louder as she chased me, it was almost like she wanted my help. I dashed inside and slammed the door behind me as hard as I could, standing, staring at her. And that's when I heard it. Screams of agony started howling from everywhere, and the mother immediately ran towards the woods in fear. I was anxiously waiting to see what made that creature run off when 
Suddenly, from behind the building, these horrific flesh-looking creatures started running and limping in my direction. I knew I couldn't hide from these things if they could smell me, so I ran towards the roof. I closed as many doors as I could behind me and quietly sat in an air vent as these creatures searched through the building. I tried to breathe as little as possible, but that was hard when you're terrified beyond belief. Well, the building was so decrepit and old, I could peek through where I was hiding. I wanted to see what I was running and hiding from. Well, the smaller ones had already left the building. Only the big ones remained. As I was peeking through, a huge man in a hazmat suit stumbled by. He was bloated. He looked like he could pop at any second. His suit was sewn shut like human flesh, like it was a part of his body. Well, he was either terribly burned or mutated. I couldn't tell. Well, their flesh looked like melted candle wax. They all finally left, and I was alone with my fear. I felt like prey here. I needed to escape whatever this was. I needed to get back to my rental car. Well, now I'd had quite enough. I left that building and slowly made my way towards the exit trail. As I was walking, I noticed it felt like time wasn't moving here. It had been the same time of day as when I'd woken up. And it had surely been a few hours, but the sky was still the same red and orange. And this gave me an uneasy feeling. While I was walking, I noticed a normal-looking house far off in the distance. It wasn't old and abandoned-looking. It had a lit torch on the front porch, like someone was currently living there. Finally, some good news, I thought. But this was, towards the reactors, a place I didn't want to go to. I decided that the house was my best bet, so I carefully made my way towards it, not wanting to alarm any more creatures on the way. As I was walking, I could still hear the odd screams and howls off in the distance. I could hear the pain these creatures were in. As I walked towards the house, I looked up at the tall reactor towers, they looked enormous. I lifted my hand to shade my eyes from the glow that seemed to emanate from them. And that's when I realized I could see the bones through my skin. Oh, this caused me to quicken my pace. I started to jog since I was finally getting closer to this house. As I arrived, I could see a fire lit inside the house. Someone was definitely living there. Hello? Anybody home? I need help. Please, I let out desperately. At that moment, a deformed dog came running out from beneath the deck. I ran back and stumbled as the dog was halted by a chain, just barely keeping it away from me. The dog was missing all its fur and constantly was scratching itself, staring me down a few inches from my face, growling and snarling at me. Suddenly, behind him, the door flew open. Who's there? Why are you here? said a man as he walked forward. He was old and looked like a priest. He was wearing a torn robe and some kind of necklace around his neck. Who is there? he repeated, but louder this time. Um, me. I'm here, I responded, confused. Can you not see me? I asked. No, I cannot see. Come in, quickly now he said, while motioning his arms towards the house. His dog seemed to calm. I walked past the beast and into the house as he shut the door behind me. Well, his place looked old. Everything in here looked like it was from a century ago. Who are you? Why are you still here? I asked. Why are you here? You should not be here, he responded. I'm lost, I think. Well, I don't know how I ended up here exactly. I was exploring the city when somehow I just ended up in this place. You don't just end up here. What were you doing exactly? He asked sternly. Well, I was looking for someone. Someone was following me and I tried to see where it was. And they touched me and I ended up here. Hmm, I see. So you were why all those things were riled up then, eh? I heard a group of those things dragging something up to the church. I'm guessing it was you. Me? What do you mean? I'm right here. You are here, yes. But they took your body up to the church, he said as he walked towards a window and pointed outwards. 
They sacrifice something every chance they get, those dirty bastards. Oh, I'm sick of those things, he said in anger. I wish they would go away so I could rest in peace. What are you? Are you one of them? I asked slowly. But no, I used to be a priest. I stayed back as long as I could to help the people pass on, in peace, long after the army had left everyone behind. But I guess I stayed too long, because somehow I ended up stuck here. I can't leave or move on, and so I learned to live with these monsters. And I stay near the towers because it's the one place they seem to hate. Is there any way I can leave this place? I asked. I don't know. Maybe if we get your body before they tear it apart we can, but I've never tried such a thing. Most who come here never make it out. People have been here before. A few, yes, lost souls like you. A few government scientists came here once, but never returned. I think the monsters scared them away. Those creatures, the monsters, what are they exactly? Were they always here? No, they were people like you. They were left behind or chose to stay behind. Some tried to help. Some wanted to take advantage of the situation with greed. In the end, the radiation was too much for us all. The government hid from us how bad the situation really was. Am I... dead? I asked, suddenly. No, not yet. But I am. Right now you are in between both. We must hurry. I don't know how much time you have. We'll clutch your body and try to put you back. He grabbed a walking stick, put a few vials of some liquid into his pocket, and we were off to the church. As we were leaving, he untied his dog and asked him what that thing was. Man's best friend, he responded. I used to leave him a bed outside my house. He seemed scared of those things out there. Eventually we gained each other's trust and have been following each other ever since. Not all the things here are like him, though. Almost all those things out there will try to rip you to shreds, given the chance. They take the limbs off of anything and leave them at the altar, like a gift. A gift for who? I asked. There's one out there who stays hidden, but all those creatures fear him, so they leave him gifts hoping he won't go after them. What is he? I don't know, but he was close to the reactors when everything went down. I think he is the most mutated of us all. As we were walking along a path, I noticed a body mutated into the ground. His legs were cut off and he was slowly flailing his arms about, like he was trying to get unstuck, but he was cemented into the ground. The old man walked past it without noticing I wanted to try to help, but I'm sure it would have attacked me the second I was too close. As we got closer to the church, I noticed bones were scattered everywhere. Be careful, he warned. How can you see the way? I asked. I have been here a very long time, so long that I barely remember my life before the disaster. My memories slip away more and more every day, and I fear that soon I will become one of these creatures. I felt pity for this man, and wished I could help him. We walked towards the back entrance of the church. The windows were all broken, and the front doors were barricaded shut. We slowly entered, and as we rounded the corner I could see my lifeless body laying on the ground. It felt odd looking at my own body. I ran towards myself, oh, and I was cold to the touch. I'm dead, I let out in worry. No, you are not, and be quiet, we are in its den now, said the old man. Now, lay down inside your body, he instructed. I followed along, and lay beside myself. No, lay in your body, he angrily responded as he was gathering candles and some cloths. I moved over a bit, and somehow I was able to lay inside myself. It was an odd sensation. I was cold and I could feel a wetness all around me. 
Now what do I do? Nothing. You wait. He placed lit candles around me, started soaking some pieces of clothes with a liquid and placed it on my body. Stay quiet, and whatever you do, don't move. He took a few steps back and began to speak in a language I did not recognize. As he was doing this, I noticed the statue behind him begin to move. It was the one he was speaking about, the one who they fed. I yelled to warn him when the beast attacked from behind, launching both of them to the ground. His dog immediately jumped to his aid, but the creature threw him against the wall, leaving him lying motionless. Oh, he was terrifying looking, he had long skinny arms with legs that were backwards at the knee. Blood was leaking from its fanged mouth while its bloody fingertips wrapped around the arms of the priest. Don't move, he shouted. I was frozen in fear being near this creature, but I wanted to help. While the priest was holding back the fangs from digging into him, he pulled out a vial and threw it into the monster's huge mouth. It released its grip from him and staggered backwards, coughing a green glowing substance that released smoke from anything it touched. I thought for sure it was radioactive. The monster retreated outwards while the priest stood up examining his wounds. Oh, the son of a bitch dug into me deep, he said. Are you okay? I asked. I should be able to finish this, but just in case they come back, I'm going to make sure I get the last hit. He stood up and walked over to his dog. Don't worry, buddy. I'll be seeing you on the other side, he said, while petting his head. He then walked around the church, pouring something onto the ground, saving most for the entrance that we'd come in by. "'What's that?' I asked. "'You'll see,' he responded. He then walked back over to me and started chanting again. "'Are you going to be okay?' I asked. He ignored me and kept speaking in that unknown language. He was not even a minute into his ritual when a screeching roar came from outside the building. He started chanting louder while pulling something out of his pocket. I could see through the holes and broken windows that a mob of those creatures were coming directly our way. There's a lot of them, I shouted. He then lit a match and threw it onto the substance on the ground. A purple flame erupted and lit our entire surroundings on fire. Arms and heads then started reaching into the building trying to grab at us. I felt helpless. I could feel the threat of certain death on the other side of the walls. He took a step closer towards me as the fire grew and climbed up the walls. A strange glow began to form around me. I pulled my hand up to look closely at my fingertips, when I realized that my physical body moved with me now. It's working, I shouted. At that moment, more and more of those creatures began ripping open the building. The glow around my body grew brighter and brighter, when the roof started falling down, nearly hitting us. He then knelt down while continuing his chant. I started feeling sick. My body suddenly felt extremely cold. As the light around me grew too bright to look at, the monsters broke through the walls, storming inside at a great pace. The priest ignored all of this and kept with his chant. The roof then completely collapsed. It was falling closer and closer and the creatures were within armed length of both of us. And I blacked out. I was surrounded by darkness. When I awoke, I was in a dark room. The sun was down and I was freezing. I sat up and realized I was back in that room with a mirror, my camera sitting on the ledge and my backpack laying next to me. God, was that all just a dream? I asked myself. I stood up and looked at the time. It was 3.15 in the morning. What just happened? I gathered my stuff and walked outside. It was deadly quiet. No sound except the wind rustling the leaves on the trees. I started my way back and everything looked normal. I was back in the world of the living. I noticed a collapsed church on my walk back and stopped to look at it. 
It looked to have been burned. Graffiti covered one remaining wall. I stood there wondering if I'd imagined everything that had happened. And as I was looking through the debris, I noticed old priest robes, completely shredded to pieces. I turned around and walked as fast as I could towards my rental car, not wanting to think of everything that had just happened. The car started fine. I made it home with a few bruises, but nothing bad. I looked over my footage the following week, and to my disappointment, it didn't capture anything. Just me collapsing to the floor with nothing standing behind me. Did all that really happen? Or did I just hit my head hard enough to think that it happened? Well, I have no idea. I still have nightmares of those creatures and that place. So a shorter one for your Sunday evening's entertainment, but, well, there was something about that one that just really creeped me out. Pretty scary, I thought. And yes, I know, Creeks McPastor only did it a couple of days ago, and you've all heard it already, but, hey, my version is much, much better, isn't it? <laughs> only joking. But yeah, I just wanted to do this one on a Sunday for you. Um, been fascinated by the whole Chernobyl thing for many, many years, so always enjoy a horror story based on it. Well, that's it for this evening. I'm going to Amsterdam again tomorrow, but um trying to get ahead and make sure I've got a video coming out for you anyway, so no need to panic. Something will be along tomorrow evening, even though I won't be here. <laughs> well, enough for one evening. Like I said, back to work, getting ready for tomorrow. Till then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams, and bye-bye.